Hello everybody and welcome back to the Creature Flesh Workshop. Now, if you've been following along our Dragia silicone mask build, you will know that we actually hit a problem with our mold. Uh, the material we used, or the material I used, was too brittle, unfortunately, but uh, that's what we're gonna be doing today, is we are gonna be fixing that mold. All of the detail is still intact, it's just that some of the edging came off when I demolded, uh, and also the front part of the mold is broken in half, but it hasn't affected any of the details. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean that mold out, get all of that clay from our sculpt out of the mask so we can see the detail, and then we're gonna piece our mask back together. It's not the ideal situation, but we are going to fix it. So then we can finally cast our silicone monster mask. Let's go. have our mask cleaned out, put back together and ready to be fixed. We've marked out these edges where we need to fill them back in with more resin and give us a stronger wall. So what we need to do now is mix up some resin, fill in those gaps and then we are ready to start casting our mask. ready to go. So now it starts the really, really exciting part, and that is gonna be casting our mold finally in silicone. Now this first cast is going to be a test cast. So we're not gonna be using the exact silicone that we're gonna be using in our final mask. Now if you remember back to previous videos, we made this, which is our little skin piece that we tested our paint job, we tested a bit of hair punching as well. This is the silicone that we are gonna be using. You can see it's super stretchy, really, really tough. It's got some really great properties for a mask. But what we don't wanna do is waste a whole bunch of silicone on a mold that doesn't work. So we are gonna use some of this, which is similar. You can see it's still got some pretty good properties, still really stretchy, but it hasn't quite got the softness or the pliable nature of the 0020 silicone. This is a higher shore hardness. Now, we also spoke about shore hardness of silicones in a previous video, but a little overview, silicone is measured on a shore hardness scale. Prosthetic silicones and silicones used for masks are usually pretty low numbers, so gel 10, gel 25, gel 00. All of these types of silicones are very, very soft. Whereas something like this, is probably a gel 25, something that's a little bit tougher, usually used for mold making, but it's gonna do the job and it's gonna give us a nice display piece that we can put up in the workshop. We're still gonna paint it up from a distance and close up is gonna look pretty damn good, but it's just not gonna have that flexibility that we want when we're wearing it, trying to get expressions through it, that kind of thing. But it's gonna give us a great idea of what this piece is going to look like in the end. The first thing we need to do is work out how much silicone we need. Now I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in a previous video, but the way you do this is you keep the clay you've taken out of the mold, 
which we have done over there. So we are going to take that clay and we are going to weigh it. We're then going to do some calculations and we're going to work out what 70% of that weight is. And that's going to give us the answer to how much silicone we need thereabouts. So again, that's 70% of the weight of your clay is how much silicone volume you're going to need to fill that void in the mask. But let's get that weighed up and work out how much we need. Okay, so this is the clay that we took out of our mold. So we are going to weigh it and see how much clay we've got there. Okay, so here is the plan. We have about 2,050 grams of clay. 70% of that is 1,435 grams. So that is about how much silicone we're going to need. Now we are going to do a little bit more just to compensate for some of that clay we may have lost when we were cleaning out the mold. So that brings us to the technique we're going to be using for casting this. Now I'm going to try and show you in a simple diagram here. So we have in the middle our positive head form, which is this guy here. Around that we have our mold, like so. So the space between the head form and the mold is the negative space where the clay used to be and there's now a void with the textures and all of the details on the inside of this mold. And our positive head form creating the negative on the inside of the mask so it fits the wearer's face. What we need to do is get silicone in this void. Now the original plan was to create a mold we can pour into by adding a pour spout like this. We would pour the silicone down into this spout and it would fill the negative space. We'd also drill some bleeder holes. Now these bleeder holes are in the high points like the cheekbones, the eyebrows, the nose, the lips, and these are where air will get trapped when we are pouring the silicone into our mold. There's nowhere else for that silicone to go other than down into this and there's nowhere for that air to escape. So that's why we drill these bleeder holes. As we pour it in and the mold starts to fill, the silicone will leak out of these holes. We will then plug them with some sort of clay, then giving us hopefully a bubble free mold. Now the way that our mold has gone and the material that I've used because I'm an idiot, I don't think is going to compensate very well for this method. So what we're going to do instead is we are going to layer up the silicone on the inside of these molds while they're open. Then what we're going to do is get both parts, put them back together with the positive head form, let it cure and we should have a mask, which I can then create another mold out of the right materials. Then we can go back to this method of pouring, which is, to be honest, a much more efficient way of doing it. So the next step is to get going with the silicone. <laughs> curing for a few hours so we are about ready to get it opened up. Not looking too bad. We've got a few air bubbles in there but that's to be expected when you're brushing in a mold. But it's looking alright so far. Did it. Man, that was hard work. Okay, not too bad. There's a little bit of flashing and stuff to clean off here. Um, there is a few 
air bubbles that we need to clean up. But overall, considering the mold is definitely not the right material, I think it's actually turned out okay. So I think what we need to do now is clean it up, fill in a few of these little gaps, and then I think we should be getting on to painting and then making another mold for this so we can actually start reproducing them. So let's get on with the cleanup. So we've used a little scalpel here to cut a little trench just where that seam line runs down the ear and then down to the neck. Got a little bit of tearing here, that's where the air bubbles were. We've also got a few air bubbles on the back here, you can see there's one there, there's a few around here. So we've got a little bit of patching up to do, but I think it's looking pretty good so far. So our next step is to thicken up some of the silicone, the same silicone, and then we are going to fill in these lines here and make him look all pretty for painting. So the first thing we're gonna do is clean up our piece with some acetone, some of this stuff. Um, this is going to clean off any of the releasing agents, any of the oils on there, and it's gonna give us a better bond when we start to put our thickened silicone and then eventually our paint as well. successful pull from our mold. We've managed to patch this guy up and now he is ready for the very exciting bit of painting. So join us next time where we'll be painting this guy up, finishing him off, and then we can see what our final piece is really going to turn out like. Thanks for joining us and see you on the next one.